Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Kenta and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about body composition metrics. Now, recently I bought a Y scale, so I'll be using the metrics captured on that scale for this video. But from my quick research, most smart scales capture similar metrics, so the info should be generally applicable. Now, unless you're an athlete, bodybuilder, or someone who's really into fitness, you're most likely going to be like me and have no clue what all these metrics mean and what you should be aiming for. I'll do an in-depth video about each and every metric in the future, but I wanted to quickly share with you a summary of the guidelines for each of the body composition metrics that you'll find on a wide scale. So let's get into it. Okay, here's how the results of your body composition metrics are going to look like in the app. Weight is straightforward, and you can see the trend in this section. Below the weight trend line is body fat percent. The target body fat percentage you want to aim for depends on your sex and your age. These numbers are guidelines from the NIH and the World Health Organization, so very reputable organizations and one that we can believe to be solid guidance. Going back to the app, we see that BMI is tucked under the weight here. You can click it to get a quick graphic and a blurb about what BMI is. At this point, you can just say cool and move on. BMI is notorious for not giving you a complete view of your health and fitness. Instead, it's a good metric for comparing large groups of people or different countries. But if you're curious, the normal BMI is 18.5 to 25 for both males and females. All right, let's jump to lean body mass. Lean body mass is a part of the body composition that is defined as the difference between total body weight and body fat weight. This means that it counts the mass of all your organs except body fat. And organs includes bones, muscles, blood, skin, and everything else. They don't typically calculate the percentage of LBM, but on average, it's about 60 to 90% of your total body weight. So you'll need to get a calculator and simply divide what you see in LBM and divide it by your weight. Let's go to body water percentage. The recommendation according to Tanita.com is to shoot for about 50 to 65% for females, 45 to 60% for males. Next up is visceral fat. Visceral fat is located in the core of the abdominal area surrounding and protecting vital organs. Tanita.com notes that if you're under 12%, you're considered to be in the healthy zone. Next, let's go to muscle mass. You'll need a calculator for this one as well. You'll want to divide the muscle mass number by your total weight and get a percentage. Depending on your sex and age, these are the target ranges you want to hit. Next, bone mass. Now, bone mass is exactly what it sounds like. It's the weight of all of your bones. This is unlikely to fluctuate over a short period of time, but you'll want to keep an eye on it for directional changes over a longer period of time. These were the typical bone mass percentage that I was able to find at tanita.com. Let's talk about protein. Protein remains to be a bit of a mystery to me. There's not much literature out there that I was able to find on this topic, but I did find on Britannica.com that typically 40% of body weight is muscle. And of that, 20% is composed of muscle protein. So that equates to 8% of the total body weight. My reading from the Y scale is registering at 17%, which seems very high in comparison to what I'm finding on the web. Lastly, we have BMR and metabolic age. This is going to be whatever it is for you. BMR is the calories needed for you to function while at rest. And the metabolic age is going to compare your BMR to peers of the same age group. In summary, these are the recommended ranges I was able to find regarding the body composition metrics on the wide scale. While it's easy to fixate on specific numbers as targets, these are simply guidelines, and there's also a considerable amount of measurement error that we're not taking into account as well. Therefore, it's much more useful to track directionality rather than absolute numbers to see how you're progressing. If you want to know exact body composition numbers, you're going to have to have much more expensive equipment or go to a lab to be tested. So again, tracking your trend and fixating less on the absolute number is key in using this information. Thanks for tuning in until the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.